Good morning, everyone. I'm Rona Bocci, I'm a restorer, and I got my degree in conservation and the restoration of cultural heritage at the Tushu University. Today, I will present a synthesis of my thesis work titled Diagnostic Analysis for the Restoration of the 16th, 17th Century Wall Painting with the Virgin between San Sebastian and San Milerio. Testing of Nazir, a new green cleaning product based on enzymes. The Virgin between San Sebastian and Milerio is a 17th century wall painting by an anonymous editor. In this slide, you can see the appearance of the artwork before and after his restoration. To introduce the historical uh, artistic framework, the wall painting is still preserved in Palazzo Galdo, in Bagnaia, a small town in central Italy near Viterbo that was built at the beginning of the 16th century by the will of Raffaele Riario through Giuliano Gallo. The painting showed three main figures, the Virgin on a crescent moon between San Sebastian and Milerio, and two pairs of winged cherubs at the corners. The Marian team represented has been identified as an immaculate conception, is a representation that uh, uh, underwent various changes over the centuries, but the one that prevailed becoming the accepted one was the version inspired by this passage, 12.1 uh, of the John's Apocalypse. It's well known that the building, in particular the salariario and the neighboring rooms, was occupied by several families and used as a residence until the 1990s. Uh, as for the previous intervention, and specifically those uh, performed on the painting in question, the information was provided by Marcello Labate, a restorer who was part of uh, Professor Moro's team. The painting of Palazzo Gallo, both inside and outside, were treated with paralloid B72, diluted in nitro. Labate also reported the, uh, the use of other substances. On the surface, the restoration uh, of 2004, made by Moro, five cleaning dowels were left before our restoration. A good example is the larger one in the upper right part of the painting than the one on the figure of San Milerius and another on the tide of San Sebastian. Given the aggressiveness of the substances used and the long contact times, the paint is to date weakened with irreparable damage. The wall pictorial layer was covered by a protective coating that altered the normal perception of the painting, giving it a translucent appearance. These materials were uh, uh, distributed all over the surface. The stratigraphic section sampled on the blue mantle of the Virgin, um, PGA2 showed in the picture, and the old cleaning dowel at the bottom right of the painting suggests a difference of tightness for the protective layer, as you can see highlighted in red. A sample was also taken on the right leg of San Sebastian and analyzed with FTIR, um, which showed a relevant analogy over 60% with the spectrum of paralloid B44, uh, rather than B72, mentioned by the restorer. This, pro this product was a particularly concentrated in a certain portion uh, of the painting, as showed by multispectral analysis that will uh, be introduced later. Now I give the floor to the colleague Claudio Colantonio to introduce diagnostic analysis. Thank you, Ramona. Good morning, everyone. I'm Claudia Colantonio. I'm a conservation scientist and currently I'm a postdoctoral doctoral researcher at Tusha University in Viterbo. Um, in this work, uh, imaging, both imaging methods and traditional characterization techniques were used. Um, as regarding the painting technique, it is a mixed one, partly a secco, partly in fresco. And according to XRF analysis done in 20 points on the artwork surfaces, um, it was possible to detect the joint presence of calcium, iron, rubidium, strontium, and zirconium attributable to the constituent materials of the lime-based mortar and to materials of uh, volcanic origin similar to pozzolana. Concerning the pigments, the presence of iron uh, in the reds and yellows can be referred to the use of ochres and the cobalt in the blue to the use of smalt. Lead was also detected in all points in low counts and in higher quantities in white colored areas. Mercury was also detected in some red spots attributable to the use of cinnabar vermilion. 
Um, regarding the imaging diagnostic, the technique used was uh, uh, hyperchlorimetric multispectral imaging developed by Italian company Profilo Colore, which consists of a Nikon digital camera modified in full range um, from 300 to 1000 nanometers, which uses two flash units modified also in full range and band pass filters together with a UV year cut filter and a radiometric calibration target. Also, UV lamps are used for the UVF photography. Uh, the system is completed with a uh, digital image processing software, which enables uh, um, to obtain seven spectral reflectance images with only two shots, with a radiometric precision higher than 95% and a colorimetric error lesser than two. In this slide, you can see uh, briefly the procedure of acquisition uh, through HMI, which is very simple. In fact, uh, the advantages of the techniques are the accurate calibration, which ensures an ugly reproducibility. Uh, it is very rapid, it is portable, uh, doesn't need uh, any power supply, it is contactless, and it enables the integration of multispectral data with other imaging uh, spectral, um, other imaging multisource data. Uh, the software enables us uh, several statistical processing. For example, we can have the infrared and UV false color images directly in the software and with calibrated bands. Uh, we can run principal component component analysis to maximize information from different spectral bands and apply other statistical processing as normalized difference between the bands, cluster analysis. We can have the CL CLAB colorimetric data for any pixel in the images. We can build, build, um, build multispectral mapping, uh, the maps based on spectral similarities that enhance similar materials in the artwork. We can query database of spectral signature for the identification uh, of pigments on built uh, dedicated uh, database for an epoch or a, or a specific painter. We can integrate imaging data with other imaging uh, sources like radiography, matrix RF, terahertz, infrared reflectography, thermography, and so on. Uh, some uh, elaboration done in this work are here uh, showed. Uh, for example, the uh, output of principal component analysis on the UV and visible balance channel that highlighted the areas where the smalt uh, was applied that here are showed as darker spots. Uh, another mapping of the smalt was possible through infrared false color image. Uh, that uh, uh, confirmed the XRF uh, um, counts of cobalt, confirmed the use of smalt, because the typical spectral behavior in infrared false color image of the smalt is this pink reddish shade. A last uh, uh, processing was done through multispectral similarity tool that uh, uh, enabled the, um, uh, the mapping of the uh, glazing, uh, the, uh, the glossy protective that was uh, spread uh, all over the surface of the artwork, but particularly, particularly concentrated in the central part. Now I give back the floor to Ramona for the restoration intervention. Thank you, Claudia. So, the main problem, therefore, was the cleaning of the thick protective revolving film spread on the surface and particularly visible in raking light. After the test with enzymes, which will be discussed in a while, it was decided to proceed with testing traditional solvents. Dogonol was used with a cipolitan uh, paper pulp pack in equal parts on Japanese paper, with the aim of extracting the protective substance. This methodology was used in the area with a lower thickness of the film, the yellow one in the image. The benzyl alcohol uh, was the solvent that gave the best results for a thicker film, here in acid in pink. In fact, after the good results by applying Japanese paper, it was decided to apply it in agar in order to avoid the, the, diet, the direct use of the solvent. The cleaning was finished with a 2% triammonium citrate buffer solution, its subspot which had remained more stained. Insisting with the solvent will in fact uh, have weakened a pictorial layer already compromised by the previous restoration and a bubble it will have been impossible to remove a substance that had penetrated deeply. So let's see the use of enzymes in this work. 
We know that the, on the painting, paraloid B72 was applied. As we know, paraloid has an inevitable degradation, originated from chemical processes such as cross-linking or the cross-linking of chains. In the past, the most commonly used solvents were ethanol, acetone, nitro diluent, white spirit used in some cases with ammonium carbonate or bicarbonate. This means mostly ketones, mainly in buffer form, at the expense of the health of the operators. For years, restorers and chemists have dedicated themselves to the study of natural uh, substances suitable for the conservation of the artistic heritage. This includes enzymes, which are proteins that in restoration can be used to degrade uh, complex materials into simple fragments. In the specific case of the study, Considering the nature of the layer to be removed, lipases were used. The enzymes, as a biological catalyst operating with uh, uh, weeding living systems, have an optimal working temperature around 37 40 degrees. Another parameter to monitor is the pH. If the aqueous environment in which uh, uh, the enzyme is found has a pH that differs from optimal, uh, range, its activity can be compromised, also when in presence of inhibitors. For this study, we tested the nasier enzymatic gel produced by the Brenta company. In, uh, um, it's an aqueous gel based on stabilized enzymes with uh, a transparent whitish color and ready for the use. In fact, as the clear is the producer, it can be used without the need to detect neither pH or temperature on the surface and without worrying about the, possi the possible presence of inhibitors. In this slide, you can read the technical data sheet of the product, reporting the extraction for its application. The product was applied uh, with the aid of a brush with or without the presence of an interface on the surface and then covered with a portion of film in order to avoid the evaporation of the water forming the gel and it was left to act for the due time. The gel will, be in, uh, will then be removed with a brush gently rubbing the surface, then rinsed with the ionized water. The first uh, three tests uh, were done on the uh, other frame of the bottom left. For the first test, a sheet of Japanese paper was applied in the interface between the painting and the nasier layer. Given the first uh, ineffective results and considering that the technical data sheet recommended an application of 30 minutes directly on the surface, we proceeded following the extraction, but the product tended to drip. It was uh, necessary to continually spread it back up to the surface. At this point, Brenta Company suggests to use, uh, of, uh, uh, the use of transparent film with the dual purpose of preventing its dripping and to keep it moist. The results were slightly more appreciable, but it was still a longer way from the complete removal. The second phase of experimentation took place on the right frame. The test lasted 90 minutes each. The enzymatic product was applied with a brush directly on the surface and covered with a sheet of Japanese paper and a layer of film. However, despite increasing the contact time, the treatment did not produce satisfying results. The third phase involved the use of the modified nasier stone. The new formulation provided for a, a greater viscosity of the product in order to solve the problem of dripping. Also in this case, it was necessary to cover the jelly with a film. The tests were carried out in the areas next to the two previous tests. In this case, there were minimal results. The last phase of experimentation, it was decided to test the CTS enzymes for a comparison. According to the technical data sheet, it is a mixture of lipase and sterase enzymes in a supporting solution containing crucial Z. After having prepared the enzymatic solution, the first test was done in the same areas testing with the nasier for a contact time of five minutes, delayed to 10 minutes due to insufficient results. In consultation with the company, it was decided to increase the application time for uh, 45 then to 60 minutes. In this way, some results were obtained and uh, during the removal, the swab used to remove the product was slightly yellow, so something happened. However, even in this case, the results did not meet the expectation. To prove the effectiveness of enzymatic solution on a standard material test were carried 
out uh, directly on a simple terracotta uh, covered of paraloid B72. The reaction proved insatisfactory even in this case. A second application was made on the upper part. A layer of enzymatic formulation from the CTS company was uh, then applied on the left and nausea to the right. In this slide, I resumed all uh, the experimentation cases. In the case of the painting with the Virgin, the, if the uh, ineffectiveness of enzymes should not be referred uh, to the heterogeneous quantity of material supplied in previous restoration, since the Nazir data sheet defines it uh, as capable of removing numerous substances, also organic patinas and mush. Anyway, the Nazir Benta company surely records positive results, as in the case of the restorer Susanna Sarmati, who experimented with Nazir gel on some fragments of Frisco, which presented a continuous film of paraloid B72. To conclude, the very slight success successes recorded uh, in our research have provided excessively long application time. We recall in this regard that the results were obtained, uh, obtained uh, only after three packs, 90, minu 90 minutes each, and that we are dealing with expensive materials. There is no clarity on the reason for their ineffectiveness. At this, po at this point, we could reflect on the problem of uh, green methods, perhaps mentioning the high cost they still preserve nowadays, especially if related to the most common solvent used to the removal of acrylic resin. An eco-sustainable intervention method is surely the road to take in the near future, but perhaps the product currently uh, on the market do not fully respond uh, to all the problems to face uh, in real restoration cases, especially if it deals with restoration campaigns outside academic agreements and or with scarce economic resources. Thank you for the attention.